It is not necessary to go as far as South Africa to observe the reality of second-class citizenship. Deprived families herded together are to be seen in every major British inner city. Manchester's Hume bears all the sociological characteristics of a Bantustan reservation. Hume, Manchester, a massive housing estate a mile from the city centre. It was built by the corporation eight years ago as a bold new way of solving its inner city needs. Already, it has become Manchester's most notorious slum. By building four huge crescents and a series of blocks interconnected by decks, Manchester housed 13,000 people in a small area. But this style of high-density living had consequences that the planners hadn't thought of. In Hume, you are at least 30 times more likely to be mugged or murdered than the national average and three times more likely to show clinical symptoms of stress. In the 60s, scores of developments like this were put up in Britain, but they don't work. The largest one was built in Hume, and this is its story. Ironically, Manchester Corporation have one of the finest housing records in Britain. They didn't make the mistake that many authorities made of putting families in tower blocks, Instead, they went for a much-praised technique called deck access. This was a system of streets built above each other. Manchester thought it would remind the residents, who'd been rehoused from the terrace slums, of the intimate living of their old streets. But no research had been carried out on the social problems of these decks. When, I mean, when you think about streets, you think about um, little communities, neighbours, little patches of garden, the prams outside houses. Well, we have none of this. We've got the actual houses, but we've got, we haven't got the street. No way. The architects had good reason for designing Hume with common walkways. It allowed them to house a great many people in a small space. It also allowed them to make a major cost saving by reducing the number of lifts. Much of the stress on tenants in Hume is caused by the noise of children who have nowhere to play but the decks or stairs. Go on, straight up. These flats were designed for families, and the planners classed living on the raised decks as the same as living on ground floor accommodation. Our survey showed that parents living with small children are likely to show clinical symptoms of stress. Well, if the lift's broke, you've just got to get down and up for the best way you can. And I have the trolley in one arm and the baby in the other arm. And that, then when I come back, these two come up, and I come up with the trolley, the baby, and shopping in my arms. It, it does take it out of you. Yeah, I have to go up one like, flight of stairs and walk down the landing and come up the next flight, so that by that time I've got my breath back so I can manage the next lot. Right, come on, Marvin. Come on, Marvin. Come on, Marvin. Come on, Marvin. Is it dangerous to bring up children on these decks? Well... They're always standing here, and they stand on the bikes there. They put the feet on there and put their hands on there and try to look over. And if you look over yourself, look how what a drop it is. Our survey found that tenants complained that once one flat was infected, an entire block like this one suffered from vermin. When they built Hume, Manchester Corporation were clearly unaware of the huge problems they were creating. But it is possible to show they made a series of planning mistakes. First, they demolished too fast. With more terraced slums to clear than most cities, Manchester gave top priority to demolition in the 50s and 60s. In the words of one city planner, demolition became a crusade. They thought that building new houses for slum dwellers would be the easiest of their problems. Old Hume, a particularly bad example of inner city decay, suddenly became the largest slum clearance scheme in Europe. The city was left with a large area of empty land and a great many people to rehouse. Opting for high density coincided with government pressure on authorities to adopt industrialised building. Manchester had already rejected tower blocks for their families, so they went for huge horizontal decks instead. By subsidising factories to produce the concrete slabs, the government were inviting Manchester to think and build big. Residents say the worst features of Hume are the crescents. Their design shows how out of touch the architects were. Manchester was persuaded to build four huge crescents because they'd look like the Georgian crescents of Bath, but apart from the shape, there was no similarity. The Bath Crescents had been designed for a handful of the 18th century middle classes. The Hume Crescents would be built for 900 families who'd been rehoused from the slums to be packed together in horizontal decks. By far the worst pressure on tenants in high-density accommodation is having to live with antisocial families. Hume became so unpopular in the last few years that Manchester made it a dumping ground for their homeless families. Inevitably, a high proportion of problem families have been concentrated in one place. A survey carried out in 1973 showed that Hume was Manchester's most deprived area. 
Our survey showed that 60% of Hume's residents were drawing some kind of social security payment, while the remainder find themselves caught in the poverty trap between low wages and high rents and electricity bills. Estate managers like Philip Morris spend most of their time trying to collect back rent. The reason for this, of course, is in the past um, we have some arrears approaching a thousand pounds, but that, of course, is very, very high. The average would possibly be about a hundred pounds. Concentrating problem families in one area has led to a high crime rate in Hume. Probation officer Malcolm Kirk. One thing sort of rears its head time after time after time, one thing after another, of severe deprivation, sort of common factors, unemployment, trouble with social security, uh, drug abuse, um, Valium addiction, stuff like that, suicide, uh, tremendous amount of theft, um, violence rife in the area. As far as I'm concerned, it's all desperately bad. Do you think deck access properties like this um, tend to encourage crime and vandalism? On a purely personal level, yes, I do. Um, I know of instances over here, for example, where someone has burgled a flat three or four stories up in broad daylight and carried all the equipment, all the furnishings, everything down to the ground, loaded them into a van and driven off and no one's seen a thing. I think it's more to do with the fact that this doesn't belong to you. Your home is nothing more than one closed cubic unit situated in the midst of thousands of others and there's just no sense of ownership, no sense of property or belonging. We found that violence or fear of violence came up continually on the survey. Hume was a frightening place at night and most women told us they never went out alone. Residents complain that the decks are never patrolled because the police don't consider them as proper streets. Consequently, it's impossible to get milk or papers delivered on the crescents because of frequent muggings. She's been broke into that many times and now she won't open the door. Jeannie! Come on! So when we knock now, we'll let her know who it is. The kids can come along and put their hands through the letterbox and Just reach up to the Yale lock and open the door. We talked to two teenagers who claimed they regularly robbed people in Hume. Neither of them lived there. We believe their stories of attacks on tenants are unfortunately true. Do you think Hume should have ever been built? In no. No, of course it shouldn't. It's an absolute disaster, it's a mistake, and it shouldn't have been planned and it shouldn't have been built. Um, do you think Hume should be demolished? No, I think there's something we can do with it now we've got it. Manchester, the city which first won the battle to demolish its 19th century slums, will now have to save its slums of the 70s. First, to reduce noise and vandalism, families like some of the ones we showed are to be moved from the decks. Instead, single people and students will go to Hume. Secondly, the expensive underfloor heating will be ripped out at a cost of £800,000. Finally, the decks of the crescents will be divided off every 50 yards, and the crescent will become the equivalent of four separate blocks.